the following agenda items were treated as an emergency at the November 18th Lake Transit Authority meeting. Agenda item number six, paratransit services wage increase proposal. Discussion item concerning paratransit services recruitment and wages and the effect of the Valley Fire. Agenda item number seven, emergency wage survey. Review and approve agreement with AMMA Transit Planning to conduct a wage survey. Reports made by Mark Wall and Wanda Gray. This is wage increase proposal. Um, the recommendation as given in, the, in my memo is to receive the uh, wage proposal for information purposes and to delay action until additional information is made available through a wage survey. Uh, I, I think I want to modify that recommendation and just leave it up to you after hearing everything that Air Transit Services has to say and then what I can tell you about the wage survey. Um, and, you know, I think this is something that has been coming for some time. Uh, Paratransit Services has always passed on any increase that they've received in the contract or more each year to the drivers. Uh, nevertheless, as, as uh, what Wanda will be telling you this morning, uh, it probably has not kept up with the, uh, the need. Um, the, uh, more recently, uh, there's concern that uh, it's getting more difficult to recruit drivers. Uh, part of that may be due to Valley Fire, you know, we lost a driver or two. There may be more competition with other transportation providers, uh, cleanup contractors. Uh, there's also the minimum wage increase that will uh, come in January. Uh, the, uh, it's not uh, something that I think one is going to mention or in my memo, but they've also uh, been required to give uh, uh, sick leave on a paid basis, even to part-time uh, employees this year um, by state law. Uh, so there's there's a number of factors here why I think this is coming to you. Paratransit Services is proposing an 8.16% increase for employee wages. Uh, it's in your packet. If you uh, uh, have had a chance to review it, I'd be glad to either answer questions or direct questions to uh, Wanda Gray. But what I'd like to do right now is uh, give Wanda Gray an opportunity to <coughs> give a little more background on uh, why Paratransit Services feel this is necessary. I apologize that you guys didn't get my report in your packet. Um, for you to look at beforehand and I'll try not to take too much of your time. Mark did a good job, I think, of going over the basics um, of our proposal. Um, I did provide in the report for you some specifics to let you know where we are as far as recruitment efforts go. Um, I usually report those to you on my monthly reports. Um, but basically, 50% of the applications that I receive um, in L here at LTA are for people that are currently not eligible to work for us, either by our company standards or by LTA standards. Um, we have ramped up our recruitment efforts. I've attended every single job fair that's out there on deck, um, trying to find the most qualified quality candidates that we can get. We've also added incentives for hiring bonuses. So if we bring someone on board after 90 days of them staying with us, we're giving a $250 payout at 180 days, we're giving another $250 payout. If they come on board with us as a credential driver, able with a commercial license to drive for us, we're giving them $800 right at 90 days. Um, we've increased our incentive to our employee pool inside and we believe that a lot of the good staff that come, frankly, come from our own folks. So we're giving our employees a $150 bonus for anyone that they refer that stays with us um, over 90 days. And then we've additionally increased our full-time ratio um, on the employee board. So we've actually moved positions to benefit 
eligible positions to try to encourage folks to stay on board with us um, rather than going to some of the competitive agencies. We did our own uh, kind of like short, quick wage survey um, and did uh, it based on comparing wages existing in Lake County, competitive wages. In our Unified School District starts their drivers at $17.35 an hour. Kelseyville Unified starts at $14.47. Lakeport Unified starts at $15.65. And Middletown Unified starts at $4.14, excuse me. Our current starting wage is $10.48. Um, as Mark mentioned, we are hearing and seeing um, some prevailing wage kind of positions. Uh, in the past, a lot of the recruitment that we had were frankly retired, semi-retired contractors that were tired of working in the mud anymore and the construction business took kind of a dive. So folks came on and wanted to supplement their income. Now they're going back to these prevailing wage jobs down in, in the Valley area to help with um, the recovery from the fires. We also considered um, other rural transit providers and their starting wages. Um, Humboldt Transit Authority was one of, of mine to me because I lost three drivers to them. Um, their starting wage was $14.22 an hour. The Mendocino Transit Authority right next door to us is starting at $14.96. Napa Valley Transit to the south of us starts at 1222, which is closer to us. Uh, Nevada County Transit Authority starts at 1665. Over the term of our contract, um, as Mark mentioned, we have uh, made sure to, whatever LTA has <coughs> increased our rates, we've made sure to give that to the employees and more. On the last page of the report, we'll share with you um, basically LTA contract increases since 2007 to our companies in 16.04%, of which we've contributed 28.6% in raises um, to our employees. Uh, overtime and staffing schedules currently with the increase in service that we have, it'll start next week. Um, based on our current staffing, um, approximately 18 of our 29 current employees will be working six day work weeks just right below 50 hours, which is our DOT requirement. It's a little bit difficult um, for recruitment and retention um, when they're not able to really have a quality of life. Our part-time employees are now restricted based on the Affordable Care Act. In the past, when we had a shortcoming, we could bump, according to our labor agreement, an employee up to a 40-hour work week for a certain period of time in order to fill in those holes. And now we cannot work them over 30 without bumping them to full time. Um, I gave you a little bit of history. Most of you, I think, have been on the board through kind of um, the majority of this, but a little bit of history about our contract. Um, Paratransit Services, when we did this contract, the actual labor agreement that started the wage increases was actually negotiated by the outgoing contractor. And it was pretty contentious, almost two years worth of negotiations. When we came on as a new contractor, we accepted the terms of, of the labor agreement and have tried to make it work for all these years. Um, we've tried to make sure that we keep the, the system efficient, cost effective, um, and that we provide as much community service for the value of the dollar that you folks have invested. We've got to a place where that's getting very difficult uh, to do. And we're hoping that um, you would approve an increase for staff as soon as possible, maybe today, hopefully, um, so I could give them some good news so we could start working on recruitment efforts um, with a little bit better and more competitive starting wage. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Wanda, should we pay you $10,000 for your wage survey and to the other guy? <laughs> I was gonna say I think I think Mr. I think Just Mr. Wall's me. wage survey though um, is is still really relevant in that we're it going is. out for an RFP and he's gonna be asking questions about benefits and other things that I think that are important for you guys to see as well. Other questions for Mark or Wanda? Mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, I, I just uh, one thing to point of clarification, what we're doing is proposing to increase the money that we provide to paratransit. We have no control of the employees' wages. Correct. That's correct. Thank you. It is our commitment that all of this will go to hourly employees. There's no 
overhead going to our company, no increase in the company's bottom line at all. At all. This is just strictly for employees' wages. And the cost proposal is attached for you. If you'd like to see is this that first. possible to do in such a way that we can protect ourselves to make sure that that happens? I mean, I believe Wanda, but. Um, I, I have a lot of trust in, in that happening. I, I think we could probably uh, write it in such a way that it would be uh, required to go to driver wages. Uh, we have to be careful on that because we don't want to be uh, the employer. <coughs> yeah. We won't, we won't put some thought into that. Uh, we there's an open in a Pandora's box to get into that. Yeah. yeah. And there, I would say hourly employees. So we're proposing this for hourly employees. Okay. And, that, and, and is it just drivers or? It's our all dispatchers, all. our drivers, our mechanics, and our utility workers. So all hourly employees. This does not apply to salary management employees at all. Mr. Chair, if I may, you know, I, I think we get too far to this conversation. We're on a slip, so slippery slope. And because we have no control over what you pay your drivers. And we want to make sure we we keep it that way because that was what we conveyed a few years ago. Yes, and so as far as I'm concerned, we shouldn't go down that road at all on any of those questions as far as where this money is going to go or how it's going to get there. It's a need that Paratransit's asking for. Um, so I, I just think we need to be careful. And if you write anything up, um, I really think it needs to go through council if we write up anything in that direction. So, so we just need to really be kind of careful of what we do in this particular case. I think there's a need that paratransit needs some more money to take care of hiring and stuff. Maybe. So I think the fact that they made that uh, commitment in writing. Uh, <coughs> You know, if they did all this we wanted, it would come back to haunt them when they when signed the contract. Right. Or, yeah, that's a good right. point. Yeah, you're, you're, you're probably spot on. The, yeah, the other things that you should know that I think are important, uh, first off, the, the wage survey. Um, the uh, wage survey is something that uh, actually we talked about months ago. Uh, Lisa and I uh, talked about doing this as something that we give you an objective overview of what similar contracts are paying because uh, basically what you're doing if you uh, accept this proposal is you're uh, awarding a sole source contract. In the eyes of the federal government, we have to answer them. Uh, they would look at this and say, well, you know, you, you did this on the basis of uh, uh, a sole source because you didn't go out and ask other contractors what they would be charging. So it's an important issue. Uh, it's also the taxpayer's money, which I know you're very aware of, and something that, uh, that good background is important for. The, uh, the wage survey uh, was also something that was agreed to and I think desired by paratransit services. And I think we've came to a crunch time correct me if I'm wrong, because of the number of employees that are having to work six to eight weeks because uh, they're unable, they really had a difficult time recruiting people, particularly since the virus. Um, knowing all that, I did a couple of things. When, when we talked with, the, uh, with Caltrans and the Federal Transit Administration about emergency funding, uh, one of the things that I asked them at that time was, uh, would you give us a waiver on increasing the contract uh, hourly rate uh, so that the contractor uh, is more able to hire employees because they're anticipating a difficult time to fires and they've lost employees. And the answer I got to that is uh, that the fact that it was a national disaster uh, is just pretty much an automatic approval of sole source. Uh, proposals. However, it was emphasized to me that even though we would probably approve a sole source uh, contract amendment, you still have to follow the rules. And what that means really is they're going to say, have you done a price analysis? Do you know 
for sure that this is needed. Um, and I think the more information we can give Calitrans and EMT if we cut them. Now the, the thing that, when you see these wage rates that uh, Perry County Services has put together, um, the uh, couple things that you are not seeing there. Uh, when you look at uh, the other transit agencies that are listed, uh, Humboldt Transit Authority and Mendocino Transit Authority uh, both directly uh, employ all the drivers, all the all of the power wage uh, workers, and they've done it for many many years, and it's quite a bit different situation than it is for a uh, contract operation. And typically, you'll find that that uh, direct operations pay more than contract operations. There's a lot of reasons for that. One is competition, uh, which is why we go back to Ronald Reagan, who everybody likes to quote. Um, uh, you know, he made it a point that, that we should try to contract for uh, transit services whenever we can. It's precisely because of the competition that introduces the pricing. Um, the other thing is, I think the, uh, the training resources of some direct operations are less than they are for a lot of contract operations. And having, the fact that training is more difficult uh, may have some influence on wages. The wages might be higher because it's more difficult to replace employees. Napa Valley Transit Authority is contracted. Uh, and uh, so is Nevada County Transit Authority. Napa being a close neighbor, and the fact that they're contracted, and the fact that they're an urbanized area is something that you know we, we have to look at and say, gee, you know, we're not that far behind them considering all of that. Urbanized areas get about five times the federal funding per capita that rural areas do. Um, and so we really shouldn't be comparing our wages with either urban or direct operated systems. Um, so what the survey does. The survey, uh, I think, is going to end up with 21 <coughs> agencies being surveyed. They're almost all rural. We also included uh, uh, Yuba City, Marysville, and Napa uh, in the survey. Uh, and they're both mixed urban. Uh, and they're also systems that are fairly close to us. We may also get Yellow into the survey, and they would be another good one. But we may have someday end up connecting. So that survey is being fast-tracked. We want that survey completed this month. Uh, it is already out. It is a survey, monthly survey we designed so that people can answer it quickly. And I expect we will have information from that by the end of the month. So where all that leads to is, I think you're going to find, my guess is that when you look at the information that transit is provided, and you look at the survey results, you're going to see that probably their proposal is justified. Um, and what you will also get from the survey is, where do we go from here? This this is a hundred and eighteen thousand to one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars annually that we're having to transit operating expenses. So it'll help to help you to decide, have more background anyway about where we go in the future. With with uh, rates and how we have to look at the proposals we get when we do an operations contract RFP. And then finally, I think an important thing to consider is um, have we gone down the right path trying to expand services uh, quickly into evening hours and so forth? Or should we make it a smaller service and maybe pay employees? And that's something that uh, I think is difficult, and, I'm, and Wanda herself has told me that, gee, in this county, a lot of people need public transit to get around, the more options they have together. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult choice. So with that, um, knowing that paratransit services feels it's important to be able to offer something to their employees soon, I'm not going to ask you not to make a decision today. Uh, but if you do make a decision, 
to accept that proposal, I would make it contingent upon Caltrans approval of uh, our sole source basis. Questions from the board? <coughs> By making contingent, would that decrease our liability or our exposure to potential harm <laughs> back to us if on um, the sole source issue? I think uh, because it would not take effect unless it was approved by Caltrans, I don't think it would increase our liability. I do think that for paratransit services, it puts them in a position of, well, we really would be taking a huge risk if we do anything before that's approved. It might speed it up by a week or two compared to coming back to something. Pleasure board. Mr. Chair, um, you know, I, after going through huge salary surveys and you get the results and find out you can't fulfill them, which is really tough, because now you have a survey in hand that everybody else has and uh, you find out you're. 20% low, and then you've got to try to to fill that. It makes it it makes it really tough. And I think we're going to find that same thing in the situation. Um, but, but saying that, we also have to make sure we you know, cross the T's and dot the I's and everything else. I mean, just on its face, you know, it looks like we we definitely need to to be up. But you know what a lot of people don't realize is the fact that, you know, it doesn't sound like much until you start looking with the, the total, like you meant, said, $135,000. You know, it's, it's amazing what nickels and dimes add up to, really. Um, so, <coughs> myself, I would be, if, there, if there's a way we can do it, um, it looks to me like it definitely needs to be done. And, but I don't want to open us up to any you know, repercussions or liability. Um, so, you know, just, I, I had never really looked at the wages before because I want to stay completely, you know, out of it. So, um, but to me, it definitely looks like something needs to be done and as soon as possible. But, you know, that's just me. Well, there's been definitely a problem with recruitment and retention for a long time before the fire. So it seems clear that something has to happen to make sure we have drivers. And, and really, I hate if to I may, it's a disservice. I dollars for a survey, but if that keeps us out of trouble. Um, but I didn't think of what you were saying, the bigger picture of it shows how good or bad we really stand the wages. We're definitely dealing with a unique situation currently because of the fire. And a lot of times, you know, it's hard to imagine a survey can really take into account all the information you know, other than just a typical wage survey. Pleasure, yes, Lisa. Um, the one thing I, I appreciate Mark mentioning <coughs> the sole source situation. Um, I would just strongly advise, you know, looking into the procurement or the. You know, because we have been on several one-year extensions with this contract, um, you know, we just want to make sure that through the aud Caltrans audits that this is not going to pose a problem because, you know, essentially there has been no comp competition, no competitive bidding going on that, you know, would be considered. It, it is a sole source situation, and I don't know. Typically, you don't, you're not under a contract and just add, you know, a certain amount of money to a, an existing contract without having to go through some process. Um, and I totally support and understand the situation. I just want to make sure that we're not in another audit situation a year from now because we didn't, um, you know, make sure that we were procuring this additional funding into the existing contract. Um, That's a really good point. I mean, what's the best way to make sure we avoid an audit? The, the, we really have a choice when we talk to Caltrans of going to them probably next week and saying, well, we have these local wages we can uh, And 
I think that uh, they could shoot some of the holes into the wage situation that I could shoot into. You know, it's just, well, maybe that's not a broad enough view. Our survey actually asks agencies if they've had a disaster and if it has affected their wages. So that might help a lot. Even if we get no response to it, it might help a lot. And if we go to Caltrans with the survey and uh, the information uh, uh, that Caltrans Services has here, I think we have a little bit stronger case. The difference in timing, uh, if you approve this today, uh, frankly, with Thanksgiving and everything, I don't think Caltrans acts on it until sometime in early December. If we wait until uh, we get the survey results, the last day for survey results to come in is Monday, and we will have compiled the result, results by Thanksgiving. And so we're only talking for maybe a week or something like that. I, I, the only reason I even present it to you as possibly a wording now is, is I really do feel some pressure from Fair Transit Services and they're really concerned. But I think, you know, it's a week shouldn't make that much difference. I think it'd probably be better to wait uh, once that uh, information is available, I can prepare the sole source uh, amendment and the memo to Caltrans. Um, that's probably the first week of December, and your board meeting is following. So, that so it, it might make sense <coughs> just a way to show you know that, that you as a board reviewed all this, and this is your point of view too. Um, are you familiar at all with what the um, governor's proclamation says as far as, I know it gives us a lot more latitude to do things that we normally wouldn't be able to do because of the disaster. And I just wonder if this is, if this is something we can tie into that because it gives us more latitude and we don't have to, we don't have to do the uh, formal bidding process and stuff like we normally would have to do because of needing to get stuff done quickly. Um, you know, it also um, makes some of the CEQA processes different stuff for us. So I just wonder if there's something in there, because this is partially caused by the Valley Fire situation. We need, you know, we need more drivers and stuff because the, you know, the new routes or whatever, and we're not able to do So this is sure. well, turning into an emergency situation itself. I just wonder if there's something within this I don't know at all word for word or anything else, but it might be something to check in to see if it quali qualifies because I think it does go around the sole source provider. And I mean, just on its face, you look at what we have here in front of us. We have a provider here, and we have an emergency situation. So, and it's six months. Pardon me? It's six months before we have an emergency. So, I mean, that's just, it's just some other thoughts that, that maybe you know, we can justify it to do it. Maybe we, ought to, maybe we ought to do it a couple of different ways. We have it all into something that we can justify. We may just still wait for two weeks, but, you know, have it all, you know, wrapped in where we really could have done it today, but, you know, we're being cautious and waiting for two weeks, too. So, I know that was pretty broad stroke, but... Well, I agree with that. We definitely want to reference the disaster uh, uh, population. Mark, are you intending, if this is approved by the board, to um, pay for the increase through part of the emergency funds that were approved with, with, with yes. the 5311 Act? So I, I think that you know, Jeff makes a good point, and that it's, I think, a good opportunity um, Yes, well, whether, it, whether it's the emergency funds or otherwise, it's the only justification for sole source is probably that something big has changed. And, exactly. And this is the emergency.
you know, and I don't know if this is a possibility either, if we do wait to take action until December, um, you know, if once we get the approval, maybe you can make it retroactive or something. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yep. I think that would be positive for my employees if they feel that they have to wait a little while, at least knowing that it'll, it'll go back. Yeah. That's a perfect idea to uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the immediate one for this upcoming month, do you see any changes in schedules or uh, well, next week we have we're operating less hours because we have the Thanksgiving holiday and the close the <coughs> Friday schedule we actually operate our Saturday hours. So I'm hoping to be able to give people a little bit of relief then, but then the next break doesn't come until right. December. You know, they're working a lot of hours, and yeah. I'm hoping we don't lose anyone further um, to a better sure. paying job because we're working them six days a week. And Back to the board for... <laughs> yes, I apologize. <coughs> you ever try to put too much in your day? Well, I did that. I'm sorry. Maybe I apologize. Uh, Mark, having come in late then, uh, in the memo, says our contract expires 6-30-15. That's a typo. 6-30-16, right? Correct. Yeah. We're on a month to month. It's month to month. Uh, did it expire 6 30 15 over month to month? Yeah, month to month through 6-30. Okay, so it but was there correct. there was no price expired. increase or yeah. renegotiation of the contract. Yeah, it was 6 30 15 or month year. to month after that. So it's correct. correct. That's all I need. Thank you. Pleasure board. Is there at least a consensus on uh, uh, waiting, um, waiting for the survey, but yet uh, utilizing the retroactive? Variable. Yeah, I would feel more comfortable waiting until we have the. Well, I think in order them to act that they can before our next meeting, or do you plan on just bring it back to the next meeting? I mean, we're, it's, it does deal with money, so we're going to have to have a motion in a second, and a roll call vote to. Uh, Won't well, the next meeting call at the right time? That time that I, I think it's about the right time anyway. I, the board meeting is only about three weeks away because we're <coughs> we're, 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 we're late 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 today. So it's it's actually two and a half weeks. No, well, three weeks from now. One, two, three weeks from now. And why do you think that that would definitely help the employees knowing that if we do approve something that's retroactive that could give them at least three weeks of cushion? You know, we, we, we're here for the long haul. We'll do our best. <laughs> um, but being able to give them some positive feedback at this point, I think, is, is critical. And has this rate increased at least percentage-wise or monetary? Do they know what those numbers are? They, it has <coughs> not been discussed at this point, um, just with some minimal employee kind of interaction. Um, originally, we, we thought of the dollar per hour, but then we looked at it from the percentage perspective, kind of honoring those folks that have been with like hand approved for a while. So. Well, we have a recommendation that obviously is going to change now to some other wording. Someone's <laughs> ready, willing, and able to. Word Smith. Word Smith, yes. Well, the original recommendation in that. Memo would still work, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know. Sure. So I know that we received fair terms wage service proposal um, for informational purposes, but delay action until additional information is made available through a wage survey. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mark. So item number seven. <coughs> Uh, emergency wage survey. Okay, let, at your last uh, meeting, I had asked you to authorize me to move forward on uh, emergency items, uh, and I considered the wage survey to be <coughs> item. So I went ahead, and uh, originally we thought this was going to be uh, through the uh, APC work program, and I think a week or by the time Lisa got back, was that a week ago? 
uh, we we uh, decided otherwise is going through the Lake Transit Authority budget. So, um, so we had the contractor ready to go. This is the same contractor who has done our coordination plan and uh, has done our uh, non emergency medical transportation plan. They're very familiar with the uh, county and uh, they were able to mobilize and get going quickly. And so we settled on a price of $10,000 to do this wage survey, which uh, they are doing very quickly. They've been, they're doing a lot of work quickly. I think they've done a good job so far. And so I'm asking you to approve the agreement, uh, unfortunately it's retroactively, with uh, AMMA Transit Planning. I, if I can just add, this isn't an increase to the any budget. You're absorbing this as part of the your existing con LTA contract, correct? Right. LTA budget, yeah. Yes. So, so we're adding it to the budget. Adding it to the, to the bottom line? Or it's your I'll explain it in the budget item, but it's basically uh, it is uh, potentially one of those emergency items that the emergency fund will pay for. I just want them to know where yeah, but it will come from Lake Transit Authority has money in this budget. Anyone from the public? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the the uh, survey is being uh, sent out to uh, almost all uh, counties that have transit systems that are rural that uh, are above. I think our cutoff is about 18,000 population. Uh, so we have, for example, Calusa, next door goes to the east. Uh, we have Tehama, which is just a little bit further north. We have, uh, we have all the Sacramento Valley counties, but we also have Humboldt and Mendocino and Napa. Uh, so we have a good uh, representation geographically, but also it's important to look at uh, uh, the state as a whole and understand that there are some uh, perhaps regional differences. Uh, the survey results, as far as the report on this survey that's going to go out to everybody that participated in it, will not name the transit uh, agency default. However, we can provide that to support. Uh, the, the reason for that is that uh, consultants have increasingly found it's difficult to get uh, wage and benefit information uh, when they're doing things like transit development plans to compare different counties and so forth. Probably because of uh, uh, contractors. You know, that we have four or five contractors that contract for most of these services in rural counties, and they don't really want to share all this information. And the only way we got everybody to buy off on it and I talked to all the or four of the contractors, by the way, is to say we aren't going to share this information as far as the name of the transit system. What we will do is, is have it in categories with things like urban, rural, uh, uh, population ranges, uh, fleet size, uh, whether it's contracted or not, uh, which are all things that we know impact the the uh, wages. I think there's also a uh, question about whether there's a differentiation between fixed route and paratransit drivers. Um, I think there's uh, there's may also be a question about licensing requirements. Potentially, a, a transit driver could have one of three or four different classifications. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty well-rounded, and I think that the board will have a deeper understanding. Anyone else in the public? I'm seeing that we bring it back to the board. Consideration. Will be 
being as we just said in uh, six that we would like to postpone that decision to wait for the Senate to happen. No, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I might want to approve it. So, uh, I guess I need to approve the uh, emergency survey. Second. We have a motion and a second. Since we're spending money here, should we roll call? Roll call, please. Director Comstock? Aye. Director Smith? Aye. Director Fortino Dixon? Aye. Director Purdock? Aye. Director Matina? Aye. Director Shield? Aye. Director Leonard? Aye. Thank you, Mark. Uh, item number eight, mileage reimbursement rate. 